All right, so I'm just gonna go through um, kind of the updates that I found. If you have any questions, you're welcome to just ask them as we go. You can ask them in the chat, um, whatever you like. I'm guessing this will be about 30 minutes. We'll just kind of go through what's been going on in the aerospace industry. Um, yeah, so here we go. Like I said, um, if you were at the last one, the slideshow will be mostly factual, but if I do share any opinions, those are my own. So not reflective of the club or anything like that. And um, first off, just some, oh, okay, we'll just ignore that all those were messed up. All right, so just some upcoming launches. Um, on October 21st, Electron is launching, um, or Rocket Lab is launching their Rocket Electron, and it's launching a satellite for Canon, the camera company, and a satellite called Super Dove for a company called Planet. And that's a smaller rocket. Um, I believe it launches from Alaska or New Zealand, I can't remember. Um, and then we have the Delta IV Heavy, um, launching on either the 23rd or the 24th. If you remember, last time this one was supposed to launch, about a couple weeks ago, but it ended up getting um, delayed, and so it's going to be launching again. Same satellite. It's a NRO, National Reconnaissance Office satellite. Um, on October 25th, the Russian government is launching a Soyuz rocket that has a navigation satellite in it. And then also on October 25th, um, SpaceX is launching a Falcon 9, which also has an NRO satellite on it. So those are some cool launches to watch out for if you're interested. Yeah, so just some space exploration updates first off. So last time, I don't know if you guys were able to tune in, but we talked a little bit about space launch system. Basically what that is, it's a large rocket that NASA is currently working on. They've contracted out a bunch of different companies to help out. And it's supposed to launch in the next couple of years. It's going to be the next big rocket, and it's going to be um, the rocket behind our return to Mars. So where we're at on that is the first fueling test of the core stage, which is the main stage, is actually scheduled for this month. So it's down in Stennis Space Center, which is in Mississippi. It's right next to New Orleans, actually. And so this is actually the last step before they're able to static fire. So the static fire is gonna be eight minutes long. And that is the final step of what they call the SLS green run. So that is all the core stage tests that they're gonna do. And that shows a really big milestone moving forward towards actually launching, which is really exciting. And then James Webb Space Telescope. So um, also in the last one, we talked a little bit about the Hubble Space Telescope. That is a telescope that's been up in space for a really long time, I think like <laughs> 10 or 20 years now. And it is one of our best telescopes, but this uh, James Webb Space Telescope is actually supposed to replace it. It's going to be the next generation space telescope and it's planned to launch next year. So that actually completed all its environmental like vibration testing at North of Grumman, which is a really important step in its journey to actually being launched as well, which is very exciting. And then um, last time we spoke about this satellite, it's called Capella, and it was launched on, I want to say it was, I can't remember which rocket, but this was recently launched. This is exciting because it's the first commercially owned SAR or synth synthetic aperture radar satellite, which if you don't know what that means, I didn't either. Basically, it's just like an imaging satellite that takes very clear pictures. It can take pictures in day or night and in all weather. And this is the first one to be in space that's commercially owned. So that's really exciting. It's owned by, I believe, by Planet. Um, and it is the first of what's going to be a 36 satellite constellation. So if you're interested in the kind of pictures that this takes, I have a couple examples. These are really clear looks at the kind of pictures that it's able to take, which I was really, really interested by. Um, so that is really cool. And then international space updates. We're not as many this week, but there is a Chinese probe that's going to Mars. It's called Tian one one and it took a picture of itself in space. It is on its way to Mars to survey soil, rock, atmosphere, and ice. So it is going to have an orbiter, but it's also going to send down a rover to the surface. So that's currently on the way to Mars. And then commercial space updates. So SpaceX was supposed to launch a crew in the first commercial operational ISS mission on a US rocket. So I'm not sure if you guys Remember, but this summer, SpaceX launched the first U.S. rocket to have people on it since the space shuttle. That was a practice run for this. So the people on that rocket went up to the ISS. They hung out there for a couple months, and then they came back. 
Now this mission is actually the first operational ISS mission officially. So this is going to send a crew of four up and take a crew of four down, which is what rockets that go up to, the, that send astronauts to the ISS do. We've been using Russia's Soyuz rocket for this for really ever since the space shuttle. So this is very exciting. Um, it was delayed from Halloween to mid-November because of an issue with the engines, but still happening. So that'll be a really cool launch to look out for. And then SpaceX also launched 60 more Starlink satellites. So Starlink is SpaceX's um, constellation of satellites. There's a bunch of them up there. They are basically to provide better internet to especially like rural areas and areas that don't have internet right now. So this is a really cool project that they're working on. Um, they've had a couple scrubs recently. So this launch really ended that pattern and got them back up there again, which is really awesome. And SpaceX was also selected for a really cool NASA payload called the Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, or IMAP. It's launching in 2024. It's a $109 million contract. And this satellite is going to launch and travel into interstellar space past the sun, where it's going to study interstellar space, which is really cool. Um, the Delta IV Heavy, like I said, they have tried to launch that, I think, three times now. Um, that is a rocket owned by United Launch Alliance. So they are on their fourth time. They're figuring out what the issue was because each time the mission scrubbed in like the final seconds of countdown. So they're trying to figure out what's going wrong. But that is now supposed to launch um, October 23rd and 24th. Um, and then last time we talked about the Northrop Grumman Antares rocket. So that launched and it was carrying a capsule called Cygnus, which resupplied the ISS. So it delivered um, 8,000 pounds of experiments, cargo and provisions, including a couple interesting things. Um, it has a new toilet, which I thought was funny. They like made a really big deal about it, but it's interesting. The original toilet was actually not designed with female astronauts in mind. So they actually thought of that this time, which is really good. Um, also this Estee Lauder serum, which is a makeup company, they are having the first ad shot in space and they're paying $17,000 an hour to photograph it in space with the astronauts, which is wild. And they also had fresh food, which I thought was really cool. They have prosciutto, salami, sausage, brie, cheese, fruits and vegetables. So all that was on there and is now up in the ISS. And this is a picture of the capsule, the Cygnus capsule, you can see it on the right, docking with the ISS. So the arm on the ISS grabs the capsule and brings it in to the space station, which is really cool. And then um, this other startup company called Axiom Space finalized their plan for a private astronaut mission, which I didn't know about, so this is really exciting. It's going to be the first all private crew to the ISS, and it's going to actually be in October 2021. There's going to be one professional astronaut and three paying pa passengers, and they're going to ride on the SpaceX Crew Dragon. So that'll be really interesting to see who ends up being the passengers to go on that. And then I did this last time, but for any of you guys that weren't able to tune in last time, I just wanted to show it again um, in case you guys are applying to internships. There's tons of companies out there, some of which I mentioned, but there's also lots of companies that you might not realize are out there or forget about. So it's kind of good to have a quick overview. There's tons and tons of space companies, and it might seem like, especially with the UA Career Fair, they pretty much only have Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Aerojet Rocketdyne. So it's important to remember there's a huge variety of companies you can apply to and I definitely encourage you to check out. So if you're interested in working somewhere that launches rockets, these are all companies that are actively launching rockets right now. So some of the big ones we mentioned here are United Launch Alliance and SpaceX, as well as Northrop Grumman. But there's also Rocket Lab, which we mentioned earlier on. Astra is a smaller company. They actually just had their first launch a couple weeks ago. Blue Origin um, is owned by Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon. And they have launched rockets, but they have not. Um, they've launched rockets, but primarily for tests. So I'm not sure exactly where they're at in that process, but they're planning on um, creating a rocket that's able to launch their lunar system. And then as well, we also have Space Forest and Exos Aerospace, which are smaller companies that launch rockets. If you're interested in working somewhere that makes satellites, we have some of the larger companies, which are 
Ball Aerospace, Northrop, as well as Lockheed Martin. We also have Maxar Technologies, which is a really cool one. They do a lot of really cool things for the ISS and they have a contract for, um, I believe the lunar, the lunar post that's gonna be the new satellite or the new station that goes around the moon. We also have a company called Planet and Loft Orbital, which are smaller companies. If you want to work somewhere that makes crewed space vehicles, so that might not necessarily be a rocket, but more of a space capsule or something that astronauts ride in, um, you should also check out Sierra Nevada Corporation. Um, you should check out Virgin Orbit or Virgin Galactic. And then, of course, SpaceX, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin. If you want to work somewhere where they do aerospace and aviation because you're a little bit interested in both or you're not sure, Definitely Boeing and Lockheed, but also Airbus is a really cool one. Um, General Dynamics, as well as Strata Launch Systems, which is um, a company that's working on, I believe, a um, uh, like a space plane, which is really cool. Um, if you want to work somewhere that makes propulsion systems, Aerojet Rocketdyne is a really, really big one for that. Um, Blue Origin and SpaceX, as well as Northrop, make their own propulsion systems. And then there are smaller companies that work on electrical propulsion, like ASEAN systems, as well as like satellite propulsion and things like that. So something cool to think about. And if you're interested in keeping up with the aerospace industry, I definitely suggest, um, I mentioned this last time as well, but AIAA, if you're a paying member on the website, they do a daily digest, which is very helpful. They just send you um, daily events and things that are going on in the industry, which is nice. Space Light Now is where I got all this information. They post regular articles and they post when launches are happening and just asking questions. Ask people about their internship experiences. When you're, if you have an internship experience, ask the people around you um, and you can really learn a lot. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have. This one was a little bit shorter, but thank you guys for tuning in. And do you guys have any questions or anything? And if not, you're more than welcome to go, but thank you so much for hopping on. And this will be on YouTube after as well.